Yo, yo, Spectre here. Today I'll be showing you how to create a UFO abduction scene in Blender. So the first thing you're gonna do is open up Blender and make sure to remove everything from the scene. And we will be using some of the similar assets from the previous video on how to create retro vintage TV stacks in Blender. And it's gonna be the same um, 3D model of the little small town. And I'll make sure to leave everything down in the des descriptions below. So go over to file, then import, and it's going to be a GLB file. Then go to downloads. And it's going to be called uh, seven stars break lane Then hit import. And make sure to go over to rendered view. And then also what you're going to do is make sure to tilt to the axis and pan over this way. That way the Z and the X axis match this way. Then click on the Sketchfab model here and then go over to mode and then where it says XYZ Euler and then make sure to change the rotation on the Z axis over to 90 degrees. And we'll be using this side of the building and then lift up the model. Then go over to file and then import and then it's going to be another GLB file. Go to your downloads and then click on the UFO. Then make sure to click on the UFO then hit S and bring this down and then click on it again. And then over here on your rotation where it says mode, go to XYZ Euler and then you can also bring this closer to you. Also, another thing is that with these 3D models, sometimes the Z and the X and the Y, it, they're flipped around. So that might confuse you, but just be aware. But you can also do G and Y or G and Z and still uh, get around that way. And then just place the UFO here around this area. And then now go over to your file and then go over to import and GLB again and also now import the camper GY and GX and also uh, make sure to click on the camper um, then go over here to your mode and go to XYZ Euler as, as well and then just rotate the camper it'll be minus 180 on the z-axis and then also make sure to scale this down okay now click on the ufo and on the z to minus 25 that way it has a tilt and we're going to want to have the ufo spinning so make sure to lift up your timeline and then here where it says n enter 500 frames so on the first frame we want to do zero on the y and then on the 500 frame we want to do 720 that way it spins twice and now we have the ufo spinning and then go over to your render properties and where it says render switch this over to cycles and then over on your device, if you have a GPU, um, you can also use that. That way it helps with your render. And over here on the on the noise threshold on max samples, switches over to 300. And then noise threshold switches over to 300 as well. Now in your output properties, uh, on the frame rate, switches over to 60. Then over here on your output, Look for your folder where you want to place this. Mine is going to be UFO YT. Accept. And then accept again. And then leave everything else as is. Now let's create a light beam coming from the UFO that makes it look like it's levitating the camper. So do Shift A and do Mesh and then Cylinder. Do GY. And then over here on your object properties on the Y axis do minus 25. 
that way it matches the tilt of the UFO. And then on the Z scale here, bring this up just enough to where they're touching with the light beam with the UFO and the camper. So now let's bring this closer over uh, using the Y axis. And we may need to zoom in closer here to kind of see what's happening. Now that you're done with aligning, you can also make sure that the camper is a little bit more towards the light, something like that. And also on the cylinder, right click and then do shade smooth. Now let's light up the cylinder. So click on the cylinder, then go over to your shading tab. You might need to zoom out and get closer. And then over here, make sure to stay on object and then click new. And you can also remove the principal BSDF and then search for texture coordinate. Then search for mapping. Then search for gradient texture. Then search for color ramp. Then search for emissions. And then start connecting all of them. And then here under rotation, you can do 90 degrees. And then here on the color ramp, make sure to switch this from linear to ease. And then make sure to add another one. And then here on the first one, you can do like a bluish color. And then here on the second one, do a greenish color. And here in the third one, make sure to increase this up. And this one can be a little bit less. More like an aqua blue. Or like teal. And then here in the materials output, make sure it is, it's commissioned over to volume. And then that way you can have this light coming through like this. Okay, now let's go over to your layout. And let's add a sun. So do shift A. And then go over to light and then sun. And then do GY. Bring this closer. And then GZ. And let's make sure to have it pretty close to our objects here. And then make it sideways. And then go over to your data property and then do a strength of 15. And then now let's bring up your camera. Do shift A, camera, GY, and get it closer. then start adjusting it. It's okay to show some of the edges here on the frame of the camera because we will be using a lens distortion later on. Um, so once you're done adjusting your camera, it is time to adjust the camper. Make sure to bring up your object properties and be selected here on the camper. And on the Z rotation here, add a keyframe on the zero frame and on the Y axis, make sure to select it as well. Then go over to your 100 frames and then over on the Y axis, do 20 and then hit the frame. Then fast forward over to 400 and then on the Z axis here, switch this over to positive 180, then hit the frame. 
And then over on the 500 frame, on the Y, do zero. Hit the frame. And on Z, do 540. And hit the frame. And then make sure to do right click and then set origin of center mass. That way your, your camper here will spin smoothly. Now let's add the keyframes so that way your camper starts levitating because previously all we just did was just the rotation. So make sure to stay selected on your camper. And then now we're gonna touch over on the location X and the Z axis. So make sure to insert the keyframes here. And then let's switch over to the 200th frame. And here we're gonna wanna levitate the actual camper. And depending on your scale of your UFO and your camper, this might look different, but the concept is just to levitate it a little bit from the actual surface. And then we can go over to the 300th frame. And then here on the X location, uh, go towards the left and then add, insert a keyframe here. And then here as well, increase some of the levitation. Then let's go over to the 400th location of the frame. And we can also increase this a little higher. And then make sure to be in the center here now of the light beam. And then now if we hit play, we can see the actual levitation. And then that's how, and now we're pretty much done with um, touching the UFO and the camper. Now we're going to actually do insert some keyframes on the actual camera. And now for the camera, make sure to select it. And then make sure to have your object properties here. And on the Y axis, hit a keyframe here. And then scroll over to around the 380 frame. And try to zoom in with the camera. Insert a keyframe. And then now over here on the 500 frame, you can just copy this keyframe and then paste it over. And then now if you hit play, you can see that the animation now is moving along with the camera. Also, I wanted to make a note that you will be needing to install the Blender Kit. It's free and you can get a lot of cool different types of materials, 3D objects, and HDRIs um, and also like if you notice here that I have this column that's actually the blender kit and you're gonna want to install it and then go over here to where it says find HDRIs and it's gonna look for for all of them that they have and sometimes it does take a little while so you can just click over on this icon and then go back if not click on the other find models and then go back and we're going to use this other specific one that I like. And it is called Pink and Blue Nebula HDRI. Click it. And then do Original. Then hit OK. And you can exit out of here. And then make sure to go to your Shading tab. And then go over here to where it says Object. Go to World. And then we're going to want to focus here on the mapping area. Over here where it says Zero. Make sure to hit I. You're going to want to split over to your layout. And then go over here back to your 500 frame. Go back to shading. And then here on the Y, do 180. And then hit the I. And what that did was... It's similar to the animation here over on your light beams. So now if you hit the space bar, you should see the sky move. Okay, now we're almost pretty much done. All we got to do now is insert the lens distortion 
So go over to compositing and make sure that you click the use nodes here and then do shift A, search for lens distortion and then also do shift A, search viewer and then now we're going to expand this out here. And here where it says dispersion, do 0 0.15. And then now if you go over to your layout. And now we are ready to render. So do control and F12. And you can start seeing the actual finished results. And at the very end, you can see the lens distortion effect happening. And there you have it, guys. This is how to create a UFO abduction scene in Blender. And if you want to see more of these types of videos, make sure to subscribe. Also, if this has helped you in any way, please leave a like and a comment. And also, if you want to follow me on my social medias, all of the links will be down on the links below. And on the final note, thanks for watching.